Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Barbell Farm. Today we're going to be talking about germination chambers. Now for those of you that don't know what a germination chamber is, this is simply a chamber that is a place to hold seeds that you're trying to germinate. And folks that don't know a lot about germinating seeds is that seeds get really happy at a consistent 75 to 80 temperature wise degrees, 75 to 80 degrees is what I mean to say, and a humidity level probably in the 80 to 90 range. So <clears throat> what this box does is it, it gives an environment for seed to germinate at a consistent level. So keeping a cons consistent temperature and humidity over the life of the germination of that seed. And this does a couple things. One, it increases the speed or speeds up the time seeds need to germinate because instead of being in a greenhouse where you're getting that drastic fluctuation of maybe 80 degrees during the day down to 55 at night, you're getting a consistent 80 degrees in here all the time, 24 hours a day. So where in the greenhouse, it might take two weeks to germinate a seedling tray of peppers. In here, you can do that within four to five days. So it's quite amazing. Secondly, you're gonna increase the actual germination of your seed and uh, the germination across uh, the varieties. So you have a more consistent stand as you pull trays out or as you try to germinate things. So that's the two really awesome things about this germination chamber. Um, and three, it's probably a little bit of a, a money saver earlier in the season if you can create something big enough to, to germinate a lot of things earlier um, or have the capacity to do that. So let's talk about what the germination looks, germination chamber looks like, uh, how I designed this one and more of its functions and, and how it works. So we're gonna open this up here. First, I wanna start off with, this is an insulated box. So this is an insulated with, uh, I think it's about an inch or inch and a half foam in here around the whole box, floor, walls, ceilings, and uh, most important, your, your door here. So. Like I said, you wanna keep a consistent moisture and humidity in here, so you're really trying to lock everything in here as best as you can. So I built this out of uh, plywood and insulation is really what it's a foam insulation. Um, fortunately, I had insulation that was stuck to foam. Um, it's kind of, a, it's a zip, zip chant or zip wall um, construction material. I, I don't remember the name specifically. <clears throat> But what I did uh, prior to that is I built a frame. And what that frame consists of is different tray racks here. Um, so this thing's small. I built this a couple years ago, just when I was starting out, um, just to really germinate early, earlier crop stuff or more vulnerable crop stuff. So this can hold two trays per rack. And I designed this for my biggest cell tray, which is a 72 cell, which if you folks know is, is kind of a taller tray. So I designed that for this so I could fit any type of tray I have in here. So what I have in here is row type trays right now, which is what we generally will seed stuff in. Um, and these are, the, these are the shallowest ones. So you can, fit, um, you can fit those in pretty easy where the 72 cells get kind of tight. <clears throat> so, this fits two two trays per per row, like I said, or per rack. I like to have a little bit of room in between um, just to kind of keep that airflow and keep movement or keep the ability of movement of air or uh, humidity to just rise through here. On here, I just have a metal grate. It's kind of like a screen so that air and hum uh, humidity can, can formulate up towards the top of the germination chamber. <clears throat> um, and the coolest part about this thing is that it's not run on anything sophisticated at all. Your biggest focus here is to create humidity and create moisture, which is going to generate heat. Um, I should say you want to use something that will generate a warm, humid environment. And the easiest thing to do that with is a crock pot. We got to get down on the ground because it is kind of kind of low. So what we have is we have a crock pot in here that is filled with water and is set on a thermostat that is meant to kick on at 80 degrees and is just like a regular thermostat in the greenhouse we uh, wired it up very simply to wire into 
the crock pot and then it's just plugged plugged into the wall so what the thermostat is doing is it's a i guess a barrier between the wall and the crock pot and what that does is when the temperature inside the germination chamber gets below 80 degrees that tells this crock pot to turn on just like you would any crock pot and the, the simplest thing here is that you got the little little dial here and you just want to set that to high so it's going to perform at its peak so that means it's going to burn um, or cook or steam as as much as possible or as strong as possible if you will <clears throat> um and what that does is it creates a lot of humidity and moisture um up through the germination chamber as quickly as possible and you know of course if it gets too too warm it'll shut it off just like a normal greenhouse and because this is an insulated box it really does not require a lot of uh, energy for one and water too I probably have to fill this if I'm running it consistently. I probably fill this like every three days, four days at max, um, and that's when it's like half full. Um, I try not to let it get down too far because you want to make sure there's water in here to keep doing its job. If you forget about it, you could run into some issues of overheating or burning this out a little bit. Um, so, just kind of things to to consider. So, uh, this is a great little tool. Uh, you can build this at any size you want out of any material you want. The biggest thing is you just want it to be insulated uh, to do its job. Um, so yeah, this is all built out of wood. Uh, I just painted it, made a frame. Like I said, it's got these grates here and it works just well. I've seen guys build them out of pallets. I've seen guys build them out of bread, uh, bread racks. I've seen those, that's really cool. They fit two trays per rack pretty nicely. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's kind of the functional build of this. If anyone wants to see the material list of kind of the parts used to make, make this work specifically, uh, we can put that in the comments below. <clears throat> um, but yeah, let's get into a little bit more of what this thing actually does and why it's so cool. So for instance, if we were seeding something like tomatoes and peppers we did this week, and that's something that we want to jumpstart early, they're going into our high tunnels, we want to push them as fast as possible. We want to get the best germination out of everything and the best stand because these are high dollared seeds. Uh, they cost a lot of money. We want to give them all the attention we can. So, <clears throat> so what we do is we seed a tray just like normal and then we water it. We water it thoroughly before it goes in here because one thing you gotta think about is that nothing is actually getting watered while it's in here. It's just relying on that humidity and steam from the crock pot itself. So you wanna make sure those that cell tray or that row tray is pretty moist all over. That way it can stay there or stay at that consistency for the life of being in here. Um, and I've noticed we'll pull trays out and they're nice and warm and they're heavy because uh, they've got enough moisture in them and the seeds just perfectly germinate. So one really important thing I want to talk about with the germination chamber is timing. Timing is probably one of the most crucial things that you want to think about when it comes to utilizing this. And it's really got its pros, but it can really turn turn sideways if you're not careful. And the thing with this is that it's all dark in this thing your your main focus here is just to germinate seeds to get them to just get to that sprout stage right out right once they're like cracking out of the seed and that is as far as you really want to take these and the reason being is that obviously plants look for sunlight to grow everyone knows that and understands that um and this is a black struck this is a black atmosphere there's no sunlight whatsoever so plants in here or plant seeds in here that start to germinate and they start growing and they start shooting their sprouts their roots and their sprouts up out of the soil what are they looking for of course they're going to be looking for sunlight to grow so uh, seedlings in here that get left too long and you don't realize it are going to literally shoot to the sky because they are looking for any kind of light possible they think they're still in the soil um, and they haven't you know shot up to find 
find light yet. And that is a that is an issue that if you if you forget about this uh, can turn kind of really sour for you. And and it's happened a couple times to me. And I actually have a small example right here. Uh, not not necessarily my fault per se, but um, different variety is uh, one thing I do want to talk about. So uh, if you look at this one tray, this is a tray of tomatoes right here that uh, is ready to pull out. Uh, we have a select select number of varieties here if you can see that right there uh, so so obviously each variety any variety whether it's across one family or different families obviously has a different uh, just growth time or growth period uh, and and they react different um, so this right here is what I want to show you what happens when seeds are left too long in a germination chamber and if you have a whole tray that looks like these you waited way too long and so this is something you gotta one you gotta train yourself on how long it takes for these to to actually germinate uh, i've gotten it down to like tomatoes and peppers are like three to four days at max um lettuce is like two days like if that like maybe maybe a day and a half even depending on your your uh, conditions um same thing with like brassicas it's so so like you really got to time this stuff and you really got to pay attention set reminders like if you're seeding these on wednesday you know maybe set a reminder for friday to act to look at the germination chamber pull these trays out and check it's not going to hurt it to open it up quick and just pull these trays out um this might be a little hard to see but i want to try to show this down here these seeds right in this first row where it says three two there that's those seeds you know getting close to that stage but that's almost the perfect stage you want to see those popping out uh, those aren't covered with any vermiculite uh, obviously um, but under the vermiculite that's what those those look like and so in a day or so you're gonna see this tray just starting to pop uh, with the rest of these seeds and that's what's really important because you want to pull these out right at that stage of just cresting the surface or just cresting out of that seed really uh, especially in these shallower trays it's going to take less time and you want to get those out and get them into the greenhouse into the light because you that has done its job that is what you want those seeds are germinated you want to get them out into the sunlight into the heat and you want to get them to start growing properly because what that's going to give you is a better stand again it's going to give you a healthier stronger um stem uh, especially if you're transplanting a lot of these like like these right here are really leggy uh, that's what we call leggy and that creates issues when we're trying to plant things down the road uh, luckily these are going to be transplanted into four inch pots so it'll be really easy to push that root a little farther down uh, and tomatoes obviously have those adventitious roots that will push out so not a concern here but something like lettuce that this happens to that's game over um if these get leggy like that uh your lettuce tray it's game over don't even think about trying to save that tray uh it's just going to be a headache down the line it's going to take five times as long to deal with that tray things are going to get mangled together because the the root or excuse me the stem that just came out is going to still be this long even though it's got a whole you know baby head of lettuce on it that that needs to get transplanted so like i said really some awesome benefits with this but also it's something you really got to pay attention to at the same time so if you are new to this keep logs uh keep track of things again varieties are different um different types of vegetables are different um but you can virtually do anything in this in this germination chamber you're just germinating seeds and um you know, if I had a germination chamber the size of my greenhouse, I'd put everything in it. That that way it could start everything. It pushes things ahead and it gives you a great stand like I was saying in the past. Um, so yeah, I uh, really can't complain with this. I'm gonna probably build one here in a, in a year or two that's maybe triple the size so I can fit stuff uh, earlier in the season. Um, you know, things like onions that take a long time that are really finicky or leeks be great for a, for a system like this you can stick them in there 
get them past that germination stage so where they're just popping out and then you can get them out into the greenhouse and you know you got a good stand that way and and i really i would say like this is 99 percent as long as your seed's good is at least 99 to 100 percent effective and that's really crucial to know uh, because you're spending money on seed you're spending money on you know running your greenhouses or uh, wherever you're starting your seeds and you want to ensure that you're going to have a good crop right off the bat and dealing with a greenhouse environment like this behind me um, you really get those temperature fluctuations and that's something to consider is like you know plants don't like cold damp weather or you know seeds don't like cold damp weather and so if you're getting a prolonged period of 50 degree or excuse me cloudy days where your greenhouse is only sitting at 55 degrees then you know you might not be getting that nice germination you need overall just because your your climate isn't isn't what you need and sometimes that's something you have to to consider um maybe you're gonna have to turn up the heat in your greenhouse to push things along or maybe that seed that you wanted to be germinated and popped out of the soil a week ago still hasn't gotten there yet just because it doesn't have doesn't have those conditions that are favorable uh so this really opens up a lot of avenues for things like that um so yeah we are gonna shut this back up um you know it's not an airtight seal but it's pretty dang close and yeah we're gonna let it cook away and germinate the rest of these seeds pull them out by the end of the day and i don't know in a week we'll come back and we'll show some shots of of what these trays look like when they're fully germinated and popped out of the soil